Greetings, friends. You are on the Military Reports channel. And today we will discuss with you the situation in Ukraine on the 8th of June, 2024 year. A lot of things have happened today, so let's get started. And we will start with you from the Kharkiv direction, where the AFU is trying to counterattack the positions of the Russian army. Today, we received an additional report from the North Group of Troops. And if we talk about the Volchansk direction, then during the first two days, in fact, the counteroffensive, or attempts to counterattack. The AFU, let's say, lost a large number of, let's say, soldiers of the personnel. Personnel in the 82nd, in the 3rd separate battalion of the 82nd Brigade and the 172nd Battalion of the 120th Territorial Defense Brigade, that is, as for the Volchansk direction. And here we see again, we can pay attention to this post with you, the data, for example, rotates units that have lost their combat capability. But despite the fact that some units have lost their combat capability according to Russian reports, but still most cartographers, very well known, still note the advance of Ukrainian units and the restoration of control over individual, let's say, positions, individual streets and blocks of the northern part of Volchansk. In other words, if we look at this map with you, then we can draw your attention to the fact that the entire southern Volchansk of the northern part is under the control of the AFU units. We will not change the map yet. We discussed some geolocations there yesterday, and we adjusted the map based on them. We are not planning to adjust any more yet, since my wife. We need to get more information. Very serious adjustments, and simply based on some individual specialists, we will not do such things. But again, I repeat, there are counterattacks in the southern part. The main task is to restore the main paths routes, bridges, and so on and so forth. But if we turn again to the summary of the grouping of troops north, then there is a slightly different picture here. And according to the northerners, Russian units continue to storm the aggregate plant. But in other words, you see absolutely two different reports. Russian sources report that continuing assault operations, Ukrainian about counteroffensives. Individual cartographers have already begun to adjust the maps. From geolocation, what we have is artillery strikes. Here in this video, we can watch the Barbarian Squad with you. These are the fresh forces that have been transferred to the direction. Akmat Special Forces launches artillery strikes, mortar strikes on positions in the USU south of the Citadel. That is, well, the map here has not changed in principle, and until today this section of the front was under the control of the AFU units, but the most important citadel is still under the AFU. And this is the most important fortress, including the aggregate plant. And among other things, for the third or fourth day in a row, the northerners are reporting progress in the eastern direction. But again, if we talk about the eastern direction, from here, the last geolocation may have been received 10 days ago. But again, if we go back to western cartographers, they assure us that in the counteroffensive. They also managed to squeeze out several, let's say, blocks in this direction as well. Then we are moving with you to the Lipsovsky direction. There's more information here, more understanding of what's going on. And again, the Northerners also celebrate. We will discuss the report of the Northerners after we watch the main videos with the direction. Let me remind you that yesterday we saw the first shots of an attempt to counterattack Ukrainians as part of Bradley and an unspecified number of personnel in the direction of the settlement of Glubico, and there were small shots. Today, we got the same shots, only from a different angle. Better details, better described frames. The footage was published by the 92nd Assault Brigade, transferred to the direction. Here we see clearly and clearly how Bradley is working on the outskirts of Glubico, striking and not even with aimed fire. But the main task and purpose of such strikes is clear to us in principle. If we go back to the map itself, then the Ukrainian Bradley drove along this line and struck deep into their Friendship Street, Student Street and so on, so on, so on. Also, among other things, footage of the work of operators in beer and drones in beer by the armed forces of Ukraine has been published. During the reconnaissance activities, the positions of the Russian army were discovered. They were attacked with the use of drones. A little to the north, in the very, very northern outskirts of the settlement, the arrivals and strikes of aviation are deeply marked. This is not artillery, this is aviation, these are most likely the arrivals of some French controlled bombs. 
And in general, we see with you a huge number of geolocations. A huge number of geolocations mainly published from the outside in the USU. And in general, we clearly understand that geolocation is published when there is some more or less success. And we can conclude from all this that, yes, Glubico is currently the main priority goal of the armed forces of Ukraine. Assault operations are underway to restore control and squeeze out Russian units to the north in the direction of Marikovits and Olinikov. Well, in particular, if the Russian units come out of Glubico, then most likely they will have to leave. And these forests are located between Lipsy and Lukinsi. But, but this is like information from the armed forces of Ukraine. If we turn to the report of the Northerners again, they publish the following information. In the Liptsovsky direction, in the Glubico area, the AFU attempted a counterattack of up to 30 people with the support of the BMP. We saw the work of the BMP, where there were 30 people, it is unclear. Had no success and was discarded. An artillery strike was inflicted on the area of concentration of the AFU, this Becca, and up to 10 Ukrainian soldiers were destroyed. In other words, this is the story that happened. A little fleeting collision. Well, the fighting is probably going on today. Perhaps tomorrow, we will get some new, different information in the new report, or we will get more details. Assault operations are also being conducted along the Lukyansov Green Line, that is. While Russian units are repelling attacks in the Glubico area, and on the other hand, Russian units are trying to expand the control zone in the Lukyansov area, moving south towards the village of Zelenaya. At least, this information was also received today and the calculations of the North Group of Troops. And at the same time, the most populated area of the Greens was hit by FABs, the positions of the AFU were leveled. Of course, we don't see any resistance, attempts to shoot down, or the like. But in any case, Russian units are also targeting here, gradually expanding the control zone. And again, according to the summary of the Northerners, there are attempts to take the Lepsi into a semicircle. That is, if we summarize all the reports that we have, approximately the task at this stage of the Northerners is to exit, well, in a semicircle, it is even possible to exit the settlement of Veasley, that is, to try to reach this perimeter, as it were. And there is already much more. More prospects loom, there is more control, more contact area, more area for fire damage, so it's like there is an expansion. That is, from here it can be seen that there are Lukians, Lepsi, but it's like a plug in a bottle, and we need to go further. And how to go if there is already a large concentration here? A decision has been made to move this way. But at the same time, we see constant counterattacks to bring down the speed and prevent the Russian units from maneuvering. For example, no ground operation has yet begun on the part of Zachev, a new series of artillery strikes, counter-battery warfare. Hunting, lancet work, drone work has been published. In other words, no attempts are being made here from either side to attack. The Sumi direction is also silent. In other words, today there is basically all the focus and all the emphasis of both one and the other side to counterattack, as it were, and the other side to repel attempts of these counteroffensives. In the area of the settlement of Balai Kolodets, in the place of the main concentration of units of the armed forces of Ukraine, several fabs have arrived over the past day. The result of the strikes is still unknown, but I remind you that at the moment, the White Well acts as the main hub. The logistics hub for the concentration and distribution of AFU units, which is coming here. So there was probably some intelligence information here and, accordingly, strikes were inflicted. In Kharkiv, what do we have in Kharkiv? Of the interesting things, it is worth paying attention to the Iskander strike in the area of the settlement of Chugev. Perhaps in the near future, we will receive some details, perhaps we will receive information about the object that was hit, but... According to the information that comes from the source, the strike was carried out at the point of temporary deployment of, let's say, Georgian volunteers. Then we are moving with you to the North Cup direction, where the fighting continues, mainly in the area of the settlement of Stepovaya Novoselka. And today, Russian sources have also published from another angle, again, the bridge, which was recently destroyed. Here's another blow. More precisely, the bridge has been destroyed for a long time, now it's just at separate channels and at different angles. 
from different drones, the video seems to be shown, shown and shown, although it has been destroyed for a long time. And as for the stories about Ivanovka and Kislovka Kotlirovka, Stepovaya Novoselka, Stepovaya Novoselka. Russian units continue their assault operations, progress has been noted today. As you can see, we have updated the map. There is a forest belt between the so-called settlement of Stepovaya Novoselka Ivanovka. The forest belt, which acts in this case, let's say, as an advanced point, an advanced strong point, a defensive line in the USU. That is, where some units are concentrated, which reveal the beginning of movement from the Russian side. Inflicts preventive strikes there, let's say, until the main forces have reached, say, close combat. And today, footage has been published from the side of the USU, as during the next such role on the part of the Russian units. It was not possible to knock out another Behu or armored personnel carrier, and as a result, the Russian units were able to approach this forest field at point-blank range, disembark. Subsequently, the combat vehicle was destroyed, but the Russian troops managed to land, and at the moment, based on this information, it can be concluded that there are attempts to move south in the direction of the main road between Stepovaya and Ivanovka, with the aim of clearing the area and already further entering the settlement itself. On the southern flank, there is also an advance, more precisely, the application of the maximum possible fire damage. With the use of flamethrower systems of the sun is noted, we see heavy artillery working with you. In other words, there is still a sweep underway here, but again, in any case, progress on the ground will begin in the near future. Most likely, Russian units will try to enter the same forest belt, only from the southern side. And it will probably try to move further in order to cut off, let's say, the Afu unit from the railway, from the N26 highway, and, accordingly, from the main supply routes. That is, part of the unit is likely to storm the forests in the regiment from the south. And part of the Russian army unit will move further west to, say, cut off the opportunity to transfer reinforcements. That is, someone will try to carry out some such maneuvers. In any case, based on what we see, there may be a week left for this settlement for a couple of days. And most likely it will come under the control of Russian units, and the Afu will be forced to roll further west. Then, we are moving with you to the South Kapinsk direction. There are several episodes of counter-battery struggle here, and from the interesting, it is worth paying attention. To a certain intensification of hostilities on the part of the Russian army along the Chervonopopovka line and then Nevsky. Footage was published of attempts to assault another forest field after massive artillery shelling, shelling and air strikes. By Ukrainian, let's say, soldiers, you decided to retreat, and in fact left the positions, and after their retreat. These positions were occupied by Russian units. Well, it's hard to say something, to comment on something. A small episode with the direction. The only value of this information is that geolocation was not received at this particular turn, perhaps for a whole year. And then bang, and some kind of geolocation, perhaps an attempt to conduct some offensive actions in the direction of the Stallion River, and in this direction as well. Then we are moving with you to the Severs direction. The fighting is being conducted for the White Mountain to the highest point in the direction. And here there are attempts to storm Russian units in the direction of Verknikamiansky. In the footage, we see with you how reinforcements in the form of two stormtroopers on a motorcycle are moving in the direction of the stronghold, but they are ambushed, after which they were forced to retreat. Counterbattery duels are being conducted in the northern part. Of the interesting things, it is worth paying attention to the frames, and the information that continues to arrive along the line of the Razdalovka dredging. Let's start with the Vyemsky direction. As you can see, there is a fairly wide gray zone here, and that the gray zone covers almost all the strong points. Some time ago, we received information, I think even in May we received information, that the networks of these strongholds are under the full control of Russian units. We received this information from various neutral cartographers, but there was no confirmation to them. Indirect confirmation of this information was received today. It lies precisely in these frames. According to Russian sources, the Luhansk People's Liberation Battalion Zarya, publishes footage of artillery strikes on the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine in the direction. And according to this information, according to these shots, 
the strikes were inflicted on the Afu reinforcements that were moving from the excavation area to the south. In other words, fighting was conducted here and perhaps Russian units managed to take control of a number of strong points. And the Afu units tried to transfer operational reinforcements in order to restore positions or organize counterattacks. However, the Afu units were met with heavy artillery fire in this area, and, in fact, this is the delivery of reinforcements failed.